I've sat in a lot of office chairs, from budget ones to premium ones. Some of them I've used personally at home, and others I've used at work or at the chill rooms. And after all that testing, I do personally think some chairs are better than others. Keeping in mind, I'm on the smaller side at 5'7", at 140 pounds, and I use my office chairs for both task work on the computer and relaxing to a movie or a game. I also like to cross my legs once in a while, I'll slouch and shift in chairs over a long day, and generally don't use armrest, opting to fully tuck in my chair, reaching for my keyboard and mouse. So given all that, what chairs do I prefer? Hi, I'm David, and this is my office chair tier list. So let's start with the latest chair I've been using for the last couple months, the Steelcase Leap. I think this is a jack of all trades when it comes to office chairs. It's ergonomic with a lot of adjustments to fit a range of people, and it's comfortable for lounging around, especially with the headrest option. But it's not perfect, with the seat cushion being a little too firm for some, the headrest is overpriced, and there's room for improvement to the lumbar and back support, but maybe I'll cover that in a future video. A tier. Going way back in time, the IKEA Marcus was my first real office chair purchase, and I still think it's a decent budget option. It's solidly built with a long warranty, its seat and back are comfy, and has a built-in headrest which made it extremely comfortable for lounging. My main complaints are with the lack of adjustments, that meant the seat pan depth was too long for my legs, and the armrests really suck. C tier. Another budget option that I checked out early on was the Staples Hukin. I only really tested this chair in stores, but it was pretty immediate to me that it wasn't the chair for me. The mesh design was too firm for me, the build quality felt really cheap, and the headrest would stab into my shoulders. But in spite of that, it was and still is one of the cheapest office chairs you can buy today, so it might work as a budget solution for some. D tier. On the other side of the spectrum, the Herman Miller and Body is one of the most expensive chairs I've tried, but is also one of my favorite. That flexible pixel structure is truly in a league of its own for upper back support and its unique design. Still, unfortunately, it's plagued by those clunky armrests, that aggressive lumbar support, and a headrest would really be nice for lounging. A tier. Along the same lines, I'll quickly mention the Logitech version of Thin Body. Ignoring the gamer cosmetic upgrades, the new foam padding additions were questionable in my experience. And I think it was a missed opportunity for them to add a headrest here for console gamers. And the price ended up being more expensive than it would have been if I bought the original instead. So in hindsight, I probably should have just gotten that B tier. Next up is the autonomous kin chair. They had sent this to me to test a couple years ago when it first came out. And initially, I was excited to try it since it looked like a budget version of Lin Body, but I quickly realized it wasn't the chair for me. Between the uncomfortably firm and bumpy seat, lack of any real lumbar support, and how expensive it's gotten with the rebrand, it really isn't for me. E tier. I guess while we're down here, I'll just stick gaming racing chairs here to an E tier. To be honest, most of my experience with racing chairs was sitting on them while in stores, but every time I do, I'm immediately reminded why I don't like them. I'm sure some might be better than others, but it's really hard to filter through the marketing fluff. I will mention the Secret Lab Titan, which I did find surprisingly comfortable for lounging, but I don't have any long-term impressions on it, and it still lacks a lot of what I look for in an office chair for task work. D tier. Pre-pandemic, IKEA chairs were my usual go-to for budget chairs. They were easy to test out in store, and you had a generous return policy if it didn't work out. One of my personal favorites from IKEA was the Volmar, but they shortly discontinued it, which wasn't too surprising given its high price, firm padding, and relatively small and ugly design. But I'll put it as C tier. And then IKEA came out with the Jar Follette and the How to Feel which I guess look prettier and do come with more adjustments than the IKEA Marcus, but I felt like they took a step back in terms of comfort with a really firm seat cushion design. D tier. This next one might come as a shocker, the legendary Herman Miller Aeron that I'm putting as B tier. I think this chair is really comfortable for task work on the computer, and in my opinion, it's the best looking chair with its iconic industrial design. But it was never the chair I wanted to use in my home setup, as it forces me to sit a certain way and is uncomfortable for leg crossing or to slouch and relax in. There's also the Herman Miller Mira 2, which I personally think more people should take a look at if you're considering an Aeron. It might feel cheap with plastic parts and doesn't look as pretty as an Aeron, 
but when fully loaded, which does add up in price, it's highly adjustable to fit a range of people, and I think I even prefer it to an Aeron for comfort. B tier. The Haga Pisco is an odd one on this list, with unique ways to sit on it. I still do use this chair once in a while, since it provides more freedom of motion, especially if I'm doing something more creative, like arts or craft. But it's not the most comfortable, nor is it supposed to be for lounging around, so I guess it's C tier for me. The Steelcase Jester has a lot of similarities to the Leap Chair that I'm currently using, but it looks a lot more modern, has a more functional headrest, and the armrests are the best I've tried. I don't have long-term experience with the Jester, but in my limited testing found it comparable to the Leap, but I might want to revisit testing that in the future. Regardless, I'd also consider it A tier. The Mia is another great chair from Steelcase. It doesn't have as many adjustments or frills as the Jester or the Leap, but it's cheaper and is just as comfortable. Probably one of my favorite cheaper premium chairs that I've tried. B tier. So that's a list of office chairs I've tested and my ratings for them. And unfortunately, it does seem like there's a correlation between price and rank, which is unfortunate for budget shoppers. And maybe you're wondering why I didn't give any chair the top S tier rank. And that's because as good as some of these chairs are, even my favorites still have real downsides that I wouldn't want someone to overlook. Which is why I always recommend testing a chair if you can before you buy it, or at least buy it from somewhere with a good return policy. Because even the best chairs can be the worst for someone else. But hope you guys enjoyed this one. You know what to do, and I'll see you in the next video.